typical New Year's resolution goals, all that kind of stuff we've heard of before. And although I don't have an issue with setting goals when the new year comes, that's only the first step. We have to talk about action and how you're actually going to act on those goals to achieve whatever you want to achieve. So I'm going to talk to you guys about eight habits that if you can do for the next three months, you will become a completely different person. Let's not waste any time. Number one is to wake up at 6 a.m. If you're Muslim and you're watching this video, this one should be a no-brainer because you're waking up for Fajr anyways. It's one of the five daily prayers. It is an obligation on us. There really shouldn't be any discussion on this matter. Now, if we're talking about reality, unfortunately, Fajr is very difficult on the average Muslim, which is sad to say nowadays, right? But but it is it is the reality. And I'll sympathize a bit because there were periods in my life where waking up for Fajr was very difficult. But regardless of how we feel or how much we slept or what we have to do the next day, Fajr should be your number one priority and the first goal that you achieve every single morning. If you're not already doing that, make that your number one goal. And this one habit by itself, I promise you, you will see so many blessings in your life. If you're already waking up consistently for Fajr, then try to take that one step further and pray Fajr at the Masjid if you're a guy. Obviously, the reward for that is more, and at the end of the day, it's just harder to do. But we do hard things. That's the only way to improve in life. I'm not gonna act like I've been doing that consistently, but the days that I do go pray Fajr at the Masjid, you can just feel the blessings throughout the rest of your day. You have more energy, you feel like you accomplished something already, and that just cascades on and, and helps you accomplish more throughout that day. And even if you're not Muslim, waking up early at 5 a.m. or 6 a.m., it just means you've already gotten ahead of everyone else. Everyone else is still tucked away cozy in their beds while you're out there, you're praying, you're working out, you're working on your new project, you're doing homework, whatever it is, you've already gotten ahead of everybody else. And it gives you so much more time to do those things that you always wanted to do, but apparently you never had time to do them. For me, it was always making videos. I never had enough time throughout my busy day to sit down in front of a camera and start recording. But when I woke up for Fajr and stayed awake afterwards, the day just seemed more stretched and I had more time to finally record my videos and I could still go to the gym and get my homework done and do everything that needed to get done. This is a huge life hack and it'll definitely give you more time to achieve your goals. Now we need to be realistic as well because if you're going to be waking up early every single day, then you need a proper sleep schedule, which is number two on this list. These two go hand in hand and if you take nothing else from this video, work on these two habits and those alone will result in so much improvement in your life sleep is absolutely essential for so many factors of your life how you perform throughout that day your mental health it reduces your stress and it improves your mood it's not just about the amount of time you sleep but the actual quality of sleep as well so to make sure you're getting the best quality sleep possible and i know we've heard this a million times but we've heard it so many times because it actually works get rid of your screens an hour before you go to bed. Studies have shown that the blue light from your phone will mess with your circadian rhythm, which even if you get enough hours of sleep, it'll still ruin the quality of your sleep. So in that hour, find something to do other than your phone. Also make sure that you keep your room cool because your body does need to drop to a certain temperature in order for you to go to sleep. Another thing that you can also do while winding down, which is actually number three on this list, is writing down your thoughts before bed. I've been doing this more or less for the last two years, and I can't tell you how much it's helped me with my mental health just to reduce my anxiety and my stress before going to sleep. Because a lot of times what happens is we are so stimulated throughout the day where we don't give our brains enough time to actually process our thoughts. So what happens is when we're trying to go to sleep, that's the only time we have in the entire day where we've given ourselves time to just sit there and think. So our mind just starts racing through all these thoughts while we're trying to go to sleep. What I started doing is just journaling before I go to bed, writing down just how I felt throughout that day, any significant moments and you know how I'm feeling. And what that did is it just let me get all those thoughts in my head just out on paper so they weren't in my head anymore. And it's also really cool to look back at journal entries that you had from a year or two years ago and just see how different of a person you was. All it is is a very simple notebook with pages that you can write your journal entries on. It's nothing too fancy. But I mean, I have entries here from, from my time in college during Ramadan throughout the summer, it's just really cool to look back on. Like hearing myself stressing over my college finals that I had or exams, and then now being in a position where I've graduated, it's just really interesting to kind of look back on. So if you're looking for things to do other than your phone while you're trying to wind down for bed, writing down your thoughts in a journal is definitely one that I recommend. Number four, which probably is one of my favorite ones, is 
getting at least an hour a day of exercise. I cannot, I shouldn't even have to explain why this one is so important as a young man or a young woman, but especially for the guys out there, because you have to be strong physically, mentally, emotionally, everything. And the gym or working out, playing a sport, exercising, whatever it may be, this will fix all of that for you. We have to be very abrupt and honest. We cannot have any more weak men. Our generation is full of boys that have never been taught how to really be a man, that have never been given any real expectations or been told how to just live life as a man. One good and easy and very beneficial way to start is to work on your body, to have a manly physique. And I'm not one to talk, right? I'm still, I'm still working on it, but I at least understand the importance of that. And I really want to stress that to any of you guys who haven't been taught that yet. You need to work on your body. As a man, you need to be healthy. You need to have a strong body and you need to be able to carry a heavy load. So pick whatever appeals to you most as long as it puts your body through pain, whether it be weightlifting or calisthenics or even a sport, soccer, football, running, swimming, anything to really get you moving and to push your body. This is so, so important as a guy. Imagine how much better our world not even our world, but just our ummah would be if we had strong men, not just physically, but mentally as well and emotionally. And you start that off by putting yourself under that bar and lifting and, and struggling and really just pushing yourself to your limits. When you can't get that last rep in, but you push yourself anyways and you get it up, it might sound corny to the average person, but that is really where you find yourself as a man. When you find out whether you're just this lazy, spoiled little boy who's been pleasured his entire life and just been taking the easy route until he can't push himself to do anything hard. Or if you're that person who'll take the challenge and put your body to the limit in order to become a better man. If you're not already doing this, let's get to work. Number five is to sit in silence for 10 minutes a day. And ironically enough, this is probably the most difficult one on this list which goes to show how absolutely distracted and overstimulated we are as a generation. There was a French philosopher that said all of humanity's problems stem from man's inability to sit quietly in a room alone. This is true beyond word. It's become so normal for us to just always be stimulated with something that we it's it's uncomfortable for us to just sit with our thoughts by ourselves think about it when was the last time that you went into the bathroom without taking your phone or you went into an elevator without pulling out your phone we always feel the need to be stimulated to just be distracted with something this is such an underrated habit to just be able to sit there meditate for 10 minutes and to just let your mind race with whatever thoughts it's thinking but you just let it think you don't try to judge it you don't try to force it and you definitely don't try to distract it your mind is racing with hundreds of these thoughts every single minute take 10 minutes a day to just sit there practice that mindfulness and give your mind a break what you'll also find if you stick to this habit it's going to be a lot easier for you to be present in the moment when you're hanging out with your friends it's going to be a lot easier to actually interact with them right and and, and have a good time so find 10 minutes in your day preferably in the morning to just sit there and meditate and let your mind race number six is to read five to ten pages every single day this is probably best to incorporate with your sleep schedule instead of picking up your phone in that last hour when you're winding down, pick a book that you really like reading that you want to learn from and read a bit of that every single night. Every single genius in this world, everyone that's accomplished great things, every entrepreneur, every millionaire, every businessman, all of them have one trait in common, which is that they read. It's the only way to really increase your knowledge. And with that knowledge, you can do amazing things. It'll also help you increase your self-confidence because you now have the knowledge and the ability to back up whatever you're saying. And it's not about how much you read, it's about what you do with the information that you've read. Are you actually applying those lessons that they teach you? If you are, then just those couple of pages will give you immense return. The last habit that we'll mention is to drink water with every meal. Honestly, I drink about one and a half to two gallons of water every single day. And it's amazing because water is so essential for your health. If you're working out consistently, it's also important, obviously, for recovery. And it also just weirdly makes you feel better. I'm sure there's some science behind it, but the days that I am drinking a lot of water and I'm, I'm really getting that in, 
I just, I feel better. I feel more energetic. My skin's clearer. The one downside is you will have to use the bathroom about 17 times every day, uh, but it's worth it for the benefits that it has. So if you've made it this far into the video, I know that you genuinely want to improve this year and I commend you for that. But a lot of times what we do is we get really motivated to do something and we just overwork ourselves and we burn out. So the most important thing that I want you to get from this video is to not start off with all seven of these tips. I want you to start off with two to three of them, no more. You can pick whatever those ones are. Obviously, I would recommend waking up early and creating a proper sleep schedule, but even if those are too hard for you right now, pick two to three easier ones and just stick with them. And once you can stay consistent with those every single day for two weeks, then you add a third or a fourth. The name of the game here is gradual improvement. We don't want you to become a super saiyan for three days and then go back to being a lazy bum for the rest of 2023. We're gonna take it slow and easy. Start off with two to three habits, and if you can get those down for two weeks, then add another one. You go another two weeks, and then you add a fourth one, and then a fifth one. Eventually, three to four months in, you're going to be doing all seven of these habits, and they're going to come so naturally to you because you've already been doing them for months. I mean, just imagine how much better of a person you'd be if you woke up every day for fetches, started your day off with prayer, and then you went to the gym, you read your books, you drank your water, you ate healthy, you took your time to meditate and really run through your thoughts and just be more present in the moment. And when nighttime comes around, you're in bed early. You're writing down the thoughts that you had throughout the day and you're giving your body that quality sleep in order to rest and start over the next day. This is 100% achievable. All of us can do all seven of these habits. That's going to be it for this video. And just a heads up, if you follow me on Instagram, you already know this, but by the time I post this video, I will already be in Lebanon. I'm not going for personal travel, but I'm going to an orphanage where we're going to get to meet Syrian, Palestinian, and Lebanese orphans. And I'm partnering up with a charity to help provide all the basic necessities that they need. Food, water, medical aid, even toys. And so I'll include a link down below where you can donate if you want to, to help these kids just live a normal life, to bring happiness into their lives. That is going to be it for me. We are absolutely going to kill it this year. 2023 is gonna be our year, guys. I'm excited to see what happens. Wassalamu alaikum.